So with the newest season of the Combat League starting, I want to be sure to upload my rank matches from the off season. I've got a couple of these uh, that I uh, hope you will enjoy and like before I will be talking through some of my decisions throughout. So Liu Kang, obviously there's a lot of talk about Liu Kang these days. Uh, so uh, you see me going against one right here. I uh, really should have been going into the back two two after that neutral jump hit, but you know, I end up converting a different combo. Uh, obviously, the beauty of the new cat is fast recovery time, so it gives you a lot of options. Uh, you can be going for ground slam, you can be going for pressure with forward two, you can be doing setups with totem. So lots of stuff. I'm in the grinder right now. Managed to find my way out. Uh, the beauty is, of course, the fact that uh, down three lets you uh, go meaty into or jail into standing one. Um, but the interaction I really want to talk about uh, happened just a little bit ago uh, where I knocked the opponent away with 1-2-2 uh, two, two or 1-1-2 one, one, uh, and I tried to go for sunlight. That's not safe, as you can tell. Uh, and then this Lucan gets over to me, but basically the lesson is after you're standing one string, uh, do not go into sunlight unless the opponent is you know, having a tendency of rolling away or delaying wake up. Uh, happy with uh, the footsies there um, to get that back to two string. You see me going for the standard one just because it's very easy to connect. Uh, max damage is a, a micro dash into uh, three four, which I, I do do have a tendency to do. But um, there is a safe sun setup, so I really wanted to contrast those two, and then I get to throw off of it for a 22 percent damage into the slam afterwards. I was really, really happy with that exchange, <laughs> as I'm sure you can imagine. So yeah, off of, off of the forward 3-4, that's the main time to set up sunlight, uh, and then to be able to get a throw in sunlight, that's amazing. Of course, right now I'm in the corner. Uh, I have a tendency to jump to get out of the corner, uh, but that is not good if the opponent is pressing buttons, because if they catch you while you're airborne and they're, they're good, they can convert. So. Uh, you see me going for a little bit of distance. Obviously, the last part of that back to two is not not that safe because there's a big old gap. But the the opponent let me get away with it. So, and I press a button not fast enough. I should have been dead. Um, honestly, they just dropped it. Um, <laughs> but me going for the comeback. Uh, that's a really important interaction too. You can clip someone with forward tail. Um, and I'm just gonna pause here real fast and. I throw it all away right there by just going for the fatal blow immediately. Another interaction of the forward two hitting, I'm going to talk about that, and then I get I get caught. Now, honestly, one, I should have been dead earlier. Two, I mean, you know, maybe I could have flipped out and survived, sure. Two, though, twice you saw me catch an airborne opponent who was very high with forward two. This is why you need to uh, sort of wait a little bit on forward two. Uh, to see if you're catching with just that because if so you want to go straight into a special mainly the sword uh, To get the combo going. Um, I haven't tested if you catch someone high enough with 4-2 if you can do uh, A continuation of the combo by ducking and doing an attack. I doubt it I don't think the recovery of forward 2 is fast enough, but that happens it happens a good amount um, And you know to lose that extra damage when you could maybe be hit confirming it something I need to work on uh, the other major thing is I need to never ever ever off of the forward to four string just go into fatal blow it's like just this hope and prayer that if they press a button the fatal blow will hit but that was another time i should have been dead don't do it i should do it only on hit confirm or if you know they're pressuring and i can do it in between a gap anyway on to the next match between us Fight. and we're into the next one here uh you seem starting with the back to two that you can pick up with and by that i'm referring to uh, doing the up three if you catch them high enough you can convert i went for the down one but i just wasn't quick enough uh you see me knocking off parry with the slam of course that's that's nice a little bit of staggers from them just waiting for my time hit confirmed uh one two and two into the jaguar jump with corner combos that i whiff <laughs> yeah i need to experiment doing uh, uh down one twice uh maybe not even going into the three four just for guaranteed damage going like one two I'm going to do that every now and then. Uh, that was really foolish. You saw me connect with the down three and then back up. Uh, that, that jails should have gone for pressure. Could have gotten even the chip out if I had done that correctly. I mean, I still get the win, but whenever you're going back and reviewing your work, you want to make sure you're getting the win in the best way possible. And I could end up losing that one because of that mistake. Um, 
You see some nice space in there that I'm happy with. Hit with the back two two again. You see me going for the the easy, the just micro dash into uh, one two. <laughs> you hear me laughing because it always kind of creps me up when I miss with the amplified version of the slam. I swear that sword has no hitbox at all. You see the opponent teabagging me a little bit. Yes, this is going to be uh, a bit of a teabag match from the opponent. You know they're thinking I'm playing. I'm playing with Kang. I beat you. I beat you the first one. I got this. Sure, I've won a round, but you know, what do they care? Uh, you see me going for the risky three after the forward two four. You only want to do that sparingly because that is that is full combo punishable. Very risky. So, you know, I'm in I'm in the grinder looking again for my time. I did not hit him from that one. I did meter burn it though, uh, to make it safer. Uh, Liu Kang can't get a big combo off of it, so it's not crazy risky. I was real happy with that jump into uh, the Jaguar. Uh, obviously, then I get hit by Fatal Blow, which is never fun. Liu Kang just has so much forward movement. Um, but I, I should have been waiting for it. I should have been patient. Baited it. All I need is one hit, and I get hit by the forward four of Liu Kang. Oh, how many times have we all been hit by forward four from Liu Kang? At any rate, though, uh, I could be really frustrated right now, right? I mean, I basically almost had that match. Uh, and, I, and I was a little bit, but I definitely said to myself, okay got this I had it I can win this just gotta take it you know one step at a time oh you see me finishing that string to get away so a lot of opponents know that you're gonna go in with Kotal and you can beat their forward roll with the slam but um, they're still gonna forward load to try to punish you so what you want to do is do the forward to four and then finish with a three because that'll actually take you further away from them obviously if they're on point they could punish you with something else but that's a way to get away um, that, since they were so high after my up two wake up, I really should have gone for the back two too, because I could get a better juggle. See me going for some cats, uh, you know, on the head on life, and like I said, uh, Liu Kang can't do a big uh, damage combo uh, to you when Liu Kang punishes. And then I, then I take it uh, with the second hit of the Jaguar. That is nice, as long as they stay standing when you do a hit string in a Jaguar, uh, they'll get hit by both hits of it. If they duck, uh, you will go over them. Uh, this is why it can be worthwhile to do like a back 2-2 two -two where they're expecting an overhead afterward or to press buttons and then the Jaguar will uh, get both those hits when you're looking for chip out. Obviously the downside of back 2-2 two -two, it starts with a high whereas forward 2 you're hitting with a mid. So you know there's some decisions to be made there but I was happy with the way that one ended and we're into the last one now. So we're tied up 1-1. One, one. See me kind of backing away playing a little patient seeing what Liu Kang's gonna do. Uh, Liu Kang gets uh, all up in me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, 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 it, right up next to me with that forward four. Uh, was really happy about that trade there. Um, you see me ending in the sword because sometimes that can catch. Honestly, you know, if you want to keep attacking and you're not in the corner, uh, you should be going for jaguar. So I should have done jaguar there. Sometimes I just go for sword. It's an old habit. And I shouldn't do it. Um, so it's uh, not looking good. I'm in the corner against Liu Kang, trying to get out. Of course, his forward four catches, gets the juggle and the bicycle kicks. So, you know, hey, way it goes. But thankfully, Totemic is really good about getting in the corner. So you see, remember I said this is going to be teabagging? You see the teabagging happening? It was so nice to hit with a forward two uh, on those two bags. Uh, you see him going for a lot of parries. Obviously, Quake does just beat parry. I see some trolling happening. They're thinking, you know, they just got to give me this one round. It's curtains for me, basically. You see me just kind of scouting, waiting for my time. You also see me spending a meter right there, um, because that's what makes the cat only negative. Only negative nine. Um, I didn't think that that was going to connect the neutral jump, because he was so far away, but Kotokan has such range on that jumping one. I got in. Uh, and then you see there the 2 2 1 string, which is the launcher string that you can't do anything with unless you're in the corner. Uh, but it creates a really great um, just sort of timing for the slam. Now, obviously, the opponent can jump out of it, um, but it's it just the timing works out really, really well to do a slam right after it. You see me kind of go for full screen, expecting a little more, a little more fireballs from Liu Kang. Um, see me kind of spacing this out, get the combo. I'm actually really glad I went for the sword there because if I had gone for the cat, I would have flown past him, and that way I got to keep the pressure up. So I'm going to go in for some throws after the down three connects instead of the one two, uh, because I've sort of condi conditioned him previously. You know, to jump, happy about, and there you see me going for the max damage. And then all I need is a little bit and the classic. 
<laughs> oh, this is so fun. Just waiting for it. And then uh, I never teabag, okay? You can watch my previous matches. I never do it. But with this, this is this uh, gentleman or woman, I don't know. Uh, because they decided to teabag me, I decided to give a little bit back. And it was, of course, wonderful to win with tracking sunlight. So much fun. And uh, that is my Liu Kang rank match that I thought it would be fun to share. I do have a couple more, though, so on to the next. As you can see, this next match is against Night Wolf. Uh, we're seeing a lot of this character, of course, for two reasons. One, new, shiny, fun to play. Uh, and then two, because solid character. Um, you see me foolishly going for the three after that. There was no reason for it. I get full combo punish and I'm forced to flip out. Um, see me again doing something similar to the Liu Kang match. Uh, down three into grab. And then just dashing up for more grabs because, again, so many of Kotal's things leave him at perfect range to have solid Oki. Uh, Oki of, you know, uh, pressing a forward two, dashing up to throw, even dashing up to forward three, doing setups. Um, you see me getting out of the corner. I love that Air Jaguar to get out of the corner. Um, there you see me just kind of going in <laughs> uh, with the cat when there was no need uh, for me to do that. Um, you see me not confirming, but uh, one nice thing is. Uh, they are in hit sun so long you can run up and, and normally grab them. Uh, off the forward, 3-4, as we talked about previously, that is, you know, relatively safe to go into sunlight. Um, and that ends it. So sunlight wasn't really, you know, super needed for that match. It was more that hit. Um, I need to do some testing with Jaguar because the way Jaguar moves, it really seems... I like there are ways you can dodge projectiles without amplifying. So amplifying makes you immune to the projectile. Um, but from what I'm seeing, uh, you know, the way the Jaguar initially jumps up a little bit, uh, you could avoid uh, ground-based projectiles, and then the Jaguar goes low, so you could avoid high projectiles. Um, you're seeing this night will play it solid well, which is why I wanted to show this match, because uh, you see uh, the Manta airing me, um, punishing me, um, not as big as they could have there. Honestly, they, they could have gone into an axe combo. I'm not sure why they, they didn't. I should have just been just blocking there, waiting. Um, unsafe uh, shoulder tackle from them, shoulder charge. I haven't labbed that enough to know. Uh, well, that's a lie. I should just be doing 4 to 1 after the punish. And uh, another reason I want to show this match was because of my comeback. Uh, obviously, if they'd been a little bit more optimal previously, if they hadn't played a little unsafe there, I wouldn't be getting this comeback, or if Kotal didn't have the new health that he does, I wouldn't be, you know, able to make that comeback like that, but I was happy with the way it shaped up. While I'm feeling pretty good, I'm not feeling great, I should clarify, and the reason for that is, you know, I, I won that match with the skin of my teeth, uh, I really want to be winning matches much more cleanly, much more convincingly. Um, I've been working on my anti-airs, but not nearly enough. I was getting to a really good place with anti-airing with Shao Kahn, using standing one. Shao Kahn standing one is so amazing for anti-airing. Um, and I just haven't fully adjusted to Kotal's options for anti-airing. Um, you see me going in there with the forward two instead of putting on sunlight. Um, I like to you know mix up those setups after the 4-3-4 uh, just to keep the opponents on their toes, and you see me catching the opponent with uh, that forward two. Um, I didn't finish the combo though. You also see that this person is pretty darn good about neutral jucking at the appropriate times. Um, obviously, uh, they were thinking that I was going to flip out, but I didn't have the meter for it, so I got lucky with that. Um, also, I talked about how Jaguar will go over a ducking opponent. Usually, as you saw there, um, I did not. So it's it's an odd interaction. It's not always, well, not 100% clear what it's going to do. But usually, if they're ducking, it's probably based on the size of the character. Maybe, uh, maybe Nightwolf. That uh, is larger. Uh, so you see me going for the optimal damage there. You see me also doing uh, the jump in. I was doing jump one into the low launcher combo. Uh, you can get some really solid damage in the counter, but nice anti-air from Nightwolf. I know some people complain about Nightwolf in air, and yeah, it's not amazing, but as you can see, it, it can be done for sure. You see me jumping a lot on wake up, uh, a little unnecessarily. Um, I'm happy with some of the footsies that happened there, but really, if I'm going to go for a forward through four, um, I should be doing that for a setup. I mean, yeah, every now and then going off a forward 340, you know, mix up your opponent. But since our lives were basically even, I need to play more patiently. I need to, you know, be putting on sunlight after that, or at the very least, doing a totem or two. 
um, because I went in when I didn't need to, and there's plenty of characters that are great at going in, but um, you can do that with Totemic to mix up the opponent, but mainly it's sort of outlasting the opponent. And now we're 1-1. One, one. Going into this last one, I'm thinking about what I did wrong in the last match. Too much jumping, uh, going in more than I should. Uh, you see me amplifying that cat again to keep it relatively safe uh, against that wolf. You see me not doing anti as well as I would like to. Uh, but you are seeing me do the max damage back to two quite a lot. Uh, it's just I'm a little more warmed up uh, fighting this person than I was the last. Uh, and I just feel a little more confident in, you know, doing it. Uh, obviously, it gives you a bunch more damage doing the 3 4 instead of like a 1 2 or a forward 1 2 or a down 1 and a forward 1 2. Um, you see me finally blocking that freaking overhead. Uh, and <laughs> it doesn't seem like a big deal to, to be watching just these matches because, you know, all I've shown is me fighting one other opponent and then this Night Wolf. But I've fought against a lot of Night Wolves and I have not been punishing that overhead. And it felt so good to punish it and punish it optimally. Uh, so I was very happy about that. You see me getting a little crazy just throwing out the cats. I mean, it, it can be good to do that to make the opponent, you know, just sort of respect you, but against certain characters it is uh, risky. Any character with a 7 frame uh, standing one, which uh, Nightwolf uh, I'm almost 100% has. I would have to look at my chart, but I'm, I'm almost 100% Nightwolf does have that because I remember thinking that my, uh, my training partner plays like every character that can punish my cats. Uh, so, uh, there you see me going for almost max damage uh, off of the up, up two. Um, going to the back to two, I should have gone into the three, four. Uh, and then if you're hitting high enough, you can hit with the cat. Or if they're too low, you saw the cat whiffing, you can hit with the sword. That's off of the up to wake up. When they are airborne, especially. So just playing that spacing game. You see me not going into the fatal blow, which I was so happy about. I did forward to <laughs> forward to four. They blocked. I didn't go into the fatal blow. And then what do I do? I just use the fatal blow at like a random time and get punished for it. So I was actually really happy that this person's punishing me. I want everyone to punish me when I make stupid decisions, so I stop making them. You see me getting the false block, uh, but not really doing much with it. I could have gotten that throw uh, even without the false block because I delayed it. So you see them doing some nice staggers, some stagger one to throw. Good stuff. Um, Kotal's up to is so fast, such good range, these are good damage, I really do love it. So we do a little bit of parry, we're going back and forth with uh, Reflect versus parry. Then of course I don't have my Reflect out then, and so that was what I should have done a while ago honestly when we were that far away, put out some light. Really nice anti-air from this player again, uh, again this is why I wanted to show my match with them because they were just so on point uh, with their anti-airs, keeping me honest. <laughs> I was just going to say, I grab them when normally they're really good about knocking uh, me out of those grabs by doing the neutral duck into down two. Um, but remember when I said that forward roll can be punished by the by the slam? There you saw it right there. And I get it. Now honestly, on that one hit that they did, they really should have gone into um, another fatal blow. I mean, it wouldn't kill me, uh, but it definitely would have put me way down and they could have tried to zone me with some arrows. But, uh, I was happy, uh, definitely by the end of this match, because, you know, it was a solid, solid opponent. Obviously, they did make some mistakes, right? And, uh, again, what I was really pleased, though, was they were punishing my mistakes, because every time I get punished for them, I'm less likely to do them. I have one more match for you, and it's one I'm really excited to share. I'm excited about this last match because it is against King Gambler. Uh, for those of you that don't know, King Gambler is a really solid Scholar player, uh, I'm sure some would argue the best uh, Scarlet player. Uh, you can see him doing pretty well uh, at a good number of tournaments. And so I was very excited by the opportunity to get to uh, fight against him in the offseason. I'm going to stay a little quieter than normal just to kind of let you enjoy the match. Sort of was a little deer in headlights moment there. I should have immediately summoned the totem if that's what I was gonna do. Just really excited to get that throw because I knew it would time out well. Um, 
in the corner, but with the Jaguar I can get out. Of course, I go right back in. I foolishly, foolishly go for that low. I don't get punished for it, though, so that was that was fortunate. Should have punished his whiff, though, either with Ford 4 or Jaguar or something quick. Um, again, should have punished Ford 4 Jaguar, or even maybe Ford 1, too. So you see me looking at the time, looking at our life bars, and just waiting. And at this point, there's really nothing. Nothing that's going to kill me. And there it is. So <laughs> I know that might not be the most exciting. Uh, we're going to win, but it is an incredibly viable way, a viable way for Totemic to win. I should really just be doing the cat through that. Um, there's no reason for me to be scared of those blood balls. See me going for the cat there, but that's just it's way too late. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm getting, getting in the corner, but not optimal. Nice uh, restand. From Scarlet, I used to play a lot of Scarlet in the beta, so I actually knew it, but I still got clipped by it. You notice I didn't go for optimal there, uh, which would have been the standing 3-4, just because I really wanted to get um, him in the corner, but it didn't happen. Nice anti-air. Saw me jumping, went for the jump kick. You see me again there going for the jump one because I really want the 2-2-1 two, two, launcher, uh, but I'm getting anti-aired, so i got to be careful about that. Yeah, on that one, I put myself at risk. I, I need to get a lot better at, after a slam, not amplifying it unless... Unless I really will benefit from it. But there I put myself in harm's way by amplifying it. Now I'm just trying to get a little bit of life back. And remember that mess up that I talked about? Where after forward 2-4 I would do fatal blow and just the hope that a button would be pressed? Yeah. Uh, that's what I just did. So I was really, really happy with the way I played. Uh, that first uh, round, even some other moments uh, in the match, um, but definitely got outplayed later on and made silly mistakes. But it's not over yet. So at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I took the first round. I just need to play slow. I need to play patient. <laughs> Lame them out. That's fine. Uh, that's what Totemic can do. And not take unnecessary risks. So that's my mindset right now. So happy with that. Uh, Start of a whiff punish there. Uh, Scarlet is plus after that, so I really shouldn't have been doing an attack. By uh, after that, I'm referring to 4-4. Uh, four, four. Now, that should have been a punish. I was really frustrated that I didn't get that punish. Uh, it's not something that I've labbed a ton, but, you know, like I said, I used to play Scarlet, I know it's punishable. Um, so I was a little, little PO'd about that, but you know, I'm in the lead, so I'm not feeling too bad. Or was in the lead anyway. Remember when I said I was working on anti airs? Perfect example of time that I should have done a down two. The nice thing about Kotal Khan is his down two launches them so uh, straight up vertically. It's pretty easy to get a, a combo after it. Get down one, down three into a special. I was very lucky not to get punished right there after doing the three, which I shouldn't have done. Nice convert from King there. Max damage. I'm very happy about that. Meterless, 28%. That's always nice. That 
want to say there is a gap in that string of hers, which I did not punish. You saw the cat going over, uh, which again, like I'm thinking, is uh, smaller bodies perhaps on block, so something to be careful of. Now, that should have been game. Right there. Right there. I did the forward 2 4, should have gone straight into Fatal Blow. But I was able to squeak it out. I, if you go back and take a look at that, there was a stare down happening between us. I was waiting, waiting, and then I pressed. It was like this shorter stare down than normal, but I just had a feeling of, you know, he's going to press button right now. And he did. None of that should have happened, though. I should have confirmed the second hit of the forward 2 4 in a fatal blow. So that was sloppiness on my part, which could have led to a loss. Still need to work on maximizing the corner. I like jumping in and doing the launching string, but I need any more options to get maximized. A lot of that's going to come from having um, just more practice doing my anti-air successfully. So if they try to jump to get out of the corner, which used to happen all the time when I play Shotgun, I can really punish them for it. Oof. Really misinput by me, which I was super frustrated about, uh, because that could have been big damage. Again, that Air Jaguar is so good. So good for getting out of the corner. So, right now, what I should be doing before he started to come at me, I should have put on sunlight and just started away, just like I did previously. See, where's the sunlight? Where's, where's the totem? Instead... What do I do? I go in when I don't need to. It's true that um, Scarlet's not going to get big damage. She does have a, a 7 frame, so she can punish the cat, which he did right there. Um, normally can't get a lot off of it, but when she's got Fatal Blow, yeah, she can. No reason at all for me to go in. Uh, overall, though, I was really happy uh, with uh, those matches, uh, how uh, at least close that I was getting. Um, took two rounds, could have been more than that, and I can see the exact reasons, the exact mistakes that I made that I can work on avoiding for next time. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, like I said, just want to get these out now that the new season has begun. This is my you know off-season rank matches, and I'm super excited to start playing the new season and uh, get as far as I can with my boy, Totemic. See you in the next video.